I believe that January and February is the best time or one of the high times where realtors would meet lenders for potential business. So this really is the number one strategy that they do is that, you know, basically, um, apart from the phone calls, um, they need to prepare their database, right? So they would ask help from the virtual assistant to data mine or to find those top producing realtors in your area. Growth Podcast here again today with Gerard, and we are excited. It's the end of the year, and it just amazing things are going to happen next year. How are you doing, Gerard? I'm great, and it's 10 p.m. here in the Philippines, and it's quite cold. Um, I think we're getting that cold thing. Oh wow! The time. Yeah, so good times, really. Very How are nice. you? Doing good, doing good. Yep, looking at it's, uh, you know, moving towards the end of the year and the beginning of 2024. And, you know, before we started recording, you and I were talking about what a perfect time it is to hire a virtual assistant. And, you know, we want to share the ideas of what's worked in the past and what works really, really well towards the end of the year and definitely the beginning of the year. So why don't we just start talking, you know, about that again? Mm -hmm. All right, what sure. Do you think? So, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I guess this is really, you know, one of the high times or right time to hire a virtual assistant at the end of the year if you don't have a virtual assistant yet. So at least, you know, you could prepare your business and turbocharge it, you know, at the beginning of the year of 2020, I mean, 2024. So one of the strategies really that I found or discovered from other top producing loan officers is that, you know, they would hire a virtual assistant. Number one really is to do those, again, phone calls. So it's just really all about picking that phone, dialing that number, and, you know, calling those realtors, potential realtor partners, your current partners, and, you know, just to set those appointments and um, get everything ready for you. Because, you know, I, I believe that January and February is the best time or one of the high times where realtors would meet lenders for potential business. So this really is the number one strategy that they do is that, you know, basically, um, apart from the phone calls, um, they need to prepare their database, right? So they would ask help from the virtual assistant to data mine or to find those top producing realtors in your area. So basically, realtor information are or is available online in today's market, right? Or in today's um, industry. So um, you can just look up realtors there, top producing realtors and, you know, just find their information, you know, gather those information, put them into a spreadsheet or, you know, basically put them into your CRM or database and have those lists ready for any marketing campaigns that you have for next year. It's either for, for email marketing stuff or SMS blasts, if ever, you know, that's available or if you have that platform or software to use. And after gathering those information, so they could just basically, you know, um, use a VOIP and, you know, dial those numbers for you and set those appointments according to your availability. So the standard really is, um, if you could prepare or have a list of a thousand realtors, that would be a lot more helpful, you know, um, just um, between eight, I guess, or minimum of eight transactions per year. And um, <clears throat> and as, as standard, you know, a virtual assistant or an, an appointment setter or cold caller is expected to set those two appointments per day for you. So that is on a two 30 ratio. So in every 30 realtors, you know, the virtual assistant or the cold caller is expected to set two appointments. So that is, you know, um, as a standard, that could be like 10 appointments per week. And um, yeah, th th that is already a huge number, given that, you know, these are top producing realtors, or at least, you know, realtors who are um, producing like minimum of eight transactions per year. Yeah, qualified so, agents. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what I see as, you know, in terms of other top producing lenders are doing, why they hire a virtual assistant. So, you know, they, they're all gearing up um, in December and get everything started, you know, at the beginning of the year. And sometimes um, it's not just the realtors, Richard. So um, I've also helped lenders, you know, um, wanting virtual assistants to get in touch with their home buyer leads. So number one is really the past client database. So um, it's not rocket science to have somebody from your team or a virtual assistant send those text blasts um, to your past client database and, you know, just check in with them and just greet them happy holidays. You know what I mean? Yep. And also you can ask them to go into your Amazon maybe or any gift platforms or, you know, shopping platforms where they could log in and order those holiday gifts for you and, you know, and be sent to, you know, to your past point database. So totally as to how you want to go with the marketing. So it's not really, you know, confined into the, um, to the phone calls aspect of the business. So it could go beyond it and, you know, um, have your CRM and organization or database organization managed and as well as, you know, your um, offline marketing efforts. Yep. I love that. It's, it's automation, you know, having the best way to automate something is to have somebody else do it and do it automatically. So you don't have to worry about it. So yeah, that's, that's huge. Having a virtual assistant do those things in the background while the loan officer is meeting with realtors, talking with clients, you know, helping prospect themselves, but doing the thing, mm -hmm. the, all the other things that need to be done uh, while they have a virtual assistant in the background, helping prospect and, and grow their business. I love, uh, I have, in <laughs> fact, I, I, I've got a friend that did just that they hired their virtual assistant towards the end of December. And then they had the VA make their phone appointments with realtors through January mm -hmm. and February and literally changed their life. Their business exploded in the spring because they met so many agents, you know, and you're, mm -hmm. you're not, let's say you have a VA schedule you 10 appointments a week you're going to end up going on about seven or eight of those because there'll be a few no shows. So you're right. talking about, you're talking about a lot of realtor appointments in a month, you know, 30, right? right? 30, Meeting 30 new agents. And then, you know, Carl White always says you're going to get about 16% of those sending you business. That's a lot of business. And that, and like you said, Gerard, January and February have always in the past been the very best months for agents to accept appointments. And, you know, it works all year round, but you're just going to get a lot mm -hmm. more in January and February. Or positive reception from realtors. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everybody's ready back. for, yeah, they're getting ready for the spring market. They're busier. They're busier mm -hmm. working on their business because it is a little bit slower January and February. So they have that extra time, but they're more focused on their business than, and they're not, you know, a lot of agents are, doesn't matter how busy you are, you're going to take it a little easy at the end of December, you know, with Christmas and the holidays and things like that. Uh, so they get super focused right at the front of January and, and uh, the meeting, the meeting percentage of acceptance goes way up. Mm-hmm. And I just want to add into the phone calls that, for example, for client uh, or past client database, because, you know, there's gold in there. Um, I've experienced that before as, you know, as a mortgage virtual assistant. So, well, anyway, um, I know a lender who hired a virtual assistant and what they do is basically, you know, they check in with their past client database like every three months, you know, right. just checking with them if they could help out with anything and, you know, just to keep their information in their database updated, you know what I mean? And um, typically it's either they would have a virtual assistant call their past client database um, during the beginning of the year or at the end of the year, as what I mentioned earlier, you know, just to check in with them and um, just, you know, just send out or express, you know, the holiday feels. 
you know. <laughs> so that's how other, you know, top producing lenders do it in terms of, you know, marketing to their database. And December, it's also busy season, right? So you're busy with family, you're busy with all of the events and parties and what have you, or maybe you're on holiday for the whole month. You never know, or at least, you know, um, during the first weeks of January. And typically they would hire a virtual assistant literally just to, you know, to handle those incoming phone calls for you. Right. And get all those notes and send all those notes to you at the end of the day, or maybe set those appointments for you as soon as you're ready to take in appointments. And at least, you know, there's somebody from the team who's, you know, actually a live or a live person <laughs> who's talking to them other than, you know, voicemails or um, an answering service. If that exactly. Makes sense. It's actually somebody on the team. And it's it's so easy now to forward your phone to your virtual assistant during the times that you're prospecting or have appointments. And you mm -hmm. make a really good point that. There's a statistic that says 85% of people that call and get voicemail, they're going to call the next lender. So mm -hmm. when you call them back, they don't answer and you don't realize you just lost a deal. And in, and in today's technology, you know, that makes everything a lot easier and accessible. Like um, if you use Ring Central, if somebody's going to be your phone, I, I think, you know, you just really have to check it out, ringcentral.com and ask a demo on the platform and they will show you that, you know, you could typically have your number forwarded to a ring central number and then another person would literally take your call and act as a receptionist. So that's how flexible a virtual assistant can go um, versus, you know, hiring an in-house assistant because in hiring an assistant or, you know, a, a secretary, their job description could be very limited. Like for example, if I'm just doing some phone calls and then literally I'm just going to do some home buyer calls for you and I'm not going to do, you know, those realtor calls anymore. I mean, this could be a reality given that, you know, I've I've helped lenders hire a virtual assistant specifically just for realtor calls. But what I'm saying here is that, you know, um, the job as a virtual assistant is not typically confined into one specific spectrum. It could go beyond it and it could be as flexible as you want as, you know, whatever you need, literally. Right. Because I've heard lenders telling me that, hey, Gerard, you know, I'm just hiring another person because, you know, my secretary or my in-house assistant can't do realtor phone calls or they can't do social media. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's kind of like the reality of it. And I've had one client ask me really that, hey, Gerard, so what if I'm done having this virtual assistant gather those information for me? I mean, is it possible for me to assign other tasks? And I was like, yes, because again, um, the techni technicality of working at a virtual assistant is that our job is very dynamic. It could change over time, depending really as to, you know, what you need. And what exactly. your business needs. So. Exactly. They're able to do so much more. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love it. I love it. What um what else have you seen besides um phone call work and helping with database? What else do you see somebody, a loan officer, could have their virtual assistant do to assist them in addition to mm -hmm. what you talked about? Mm -hmm. In addition, really, and I just want to relate this to those realtor relationships, right? So um, I guess social media can come in in terms of connecting with those realtors. Like, for example, if I have a thousand list of realtor names on there, how can I maximize my marketing efforts? And in today's social media world, you know, it's it's not really that hard or difficult to find them. So you just need to type in their names either on Facebook or Instagram and find a realtor profile. And, you know, you can send a friend requests and you can also have the virtual assistant do some daily posting on there, depending as to what's going to be, you know, uh, more feasible for your business. Because at some point, you know, we've had lenders that don't want 100% business postings on there. They don't want mortgage right. content on there. They would want like, you know, um, a motivation posts, or send out birthday greetings, or you know, just checking in their news feeds and checking out realtor profiles, and you know, just commenting on there, reacting on their post, and um, you know, 
um, dissenting feelers that you exist as a mortgage lender. Because then again, this is a strategy that I did before because whenever we cold call realtors and they literally no have ideas to who you are, it's always a 50-50% chance. Right. However, if these realtors are conditioned that, you know, you, you for example, you, you added them on Facebook, you followed them on Instagram, you know, you sent them a message on Facebook or like, or you've been liking their posts and what have you. I mean, they know exactly who you are. They've talked the profile, you know, that's reality. And they won't be a lot more apprehensive of, you know, of setting that appointment for you or, you know, that physical appointment because they know who you are. They'll have you that name recognition. Industry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you are in the industry because, you know, I've worked with a male lender before and I've been calling tons of female lenders. I mean, female realtors and realtors are like, no, Gerard, I'm not going to date him. <laughs> All <laughs> I'm already, I already have a husband. You know what I mean? So if, if they have a background as to who you are, if you're a family man or if you're a leader in the industry and then they would have more respect for you and right. basically um, give you a positive reception to the appointment versus, you know, um, the called Collie part. Yeah, that, that reminds me of a great strategy, taking your qualified agent list, which you can get on qualifiedagentlist.com, but taking that list of a thousand agents uploading that into Facebook and advertising to that list. So what you're basically doing is exactly what you talked about, Gerard. You're warming up that list. People, realtors that see you on Facebook or see an ad, they don't necessarily remember like, oh, I saw your ad on Facebook. They just subconsciously feel like, oh, I've I've met him before. Or I know him. I've yeah. seen him somewhere. And that that strategy works so well. He is a legit person. He's not like a scammer or, you know, um, right. a weird person, random person. <laughs> right. Exactly. Good so stuff, man. I guess, you know, so so I guess that, that is one strategy that could, you know, um, that could be paired or partnered with the other strategies, like, you know, with the phone calls and email marketing or SMS marketing, social media marketing could could also play a part in your marketing efforts. Yep. Excellent. So what, um, let's say I'm a loan officer and I'm interested possibly in hiring a virtual assistant, but I want to talk about it a little more like a, how can someone set up a strategy call? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Um, you can have, or you can visit www.remoteassistantscout.com. The link will be down here and um, you can just schedule a no obligation um, call for you. And for this month, we have a special. So you get a $400 discount of the vetting fee if you sign up today up until the 31st of December. So it would be a huge savings on your rent. And um, and by the way, our package is also backed up by with a you know um, virtual assistant replacement guarantee. So at least you know you have a peace of mind if in any case the current virtual assistant won't work for you. So our team will be on standby to help you out and replace the virtual assistant with a better one or a better fit virtual assistant. If for some chance it's not a good fit, yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. awesome. What a huge savings! That's um, excellent. Mm -hmm. Yep, and. Going into the new year, the time has never been better. I tell you, because I've I've helped people hire loan officer virtual assistants throughout the years, and January and February are the time you want to start. So get a, get them going now in December, so they can really be off running in January first. Again, um, you can visit um, www.remoteassistantscout.com. So the link will appear and you can schedule your 15 minute, you know, no obligation strategy goal there. And we can discuss if a virtual assistant is something that would be helpful for your lending business. Definitely. All right, Gerard, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, being on and it's great seeing you again. And uh, let's do this again. Happy <laughs> Sure. Thank you for this opportunity. I'll talk to you soon.